Hey everybody, Robot here from Vespa Motorsport and ScooterWest.com, the exclusive Vespa dealership here in San Diego. So I kind of skipped a year on the Vespa 946. It's 2024 as of me shooting the video, and we just got this beautiful 2013 black 946 trade in, and I kind of miss that we've had the 946 with us for over 10 years. And right here I have a 2013 and a 2023 and I kind of wanted to share everything about the 946 and how it became the 946 starting in 2011. So in 2011 unveiled at the ICMA show which is in Milan Italy it's a big two-wheel motorsports motorcycle show uh, I've been to it in the past and Piaggio released a pretty radical concept vehicle called the MP6. And it was pretty close to how the current 946 looks. And then one year goes by, 2012, they revealed that the 946 is coming out. So that was the next year ICMA in late October, early November. So by 2013, here in the United States, we got the 946-150. Many of the markets, they got a 125cc model, but North America has the 150cc model, I think along with some of the Asian markets as well. So in 2013, they unveiled the 946, and we got our shipment of the first 10 or 12 of them, if I recall, and they were both in black and white. Nice, elegant colors. Um, they had the red seat. The first year of the 946 had this very large size seat. You know, it's for a passenger and the rider. And it's the first ultra exclusive luxury scooter. I don't know of too many other scooters that were in this price point at the time when it was revealed. It was $9,460 in 2013. So I thought that was kind of a good little homage to the 946 name. So 1946 is when Vespa was introduced. You know, they had some prototypes before that, but 1946 is the first year Vespa. So it was kind of homage to that 1946 Vespa. Some kind of subtle classic design cues of that original Vespa, um, including parts that are made out of aluminum, something that hasn't been used on a Vespa since the 40s. You know, they've pretty much been using steel fenders, steel bodywork, uh, starting with the ET4 where they went to, or actually I'll go back a little bit, the Koza in the mid 90s, I think that the PK, some of those they started going to more plastic parts on them. Well, the 946 kind of wanted to bring back more metal. So it's got an aluminum fender. The handlebars are a solid cast aluminum, something you won't find on any other modern Vespa or any other modern scooter in general. It's built to a level that's what you expect out of a $30,000 BMW or Ducati motorcycle, some of the high-end European um, monikers of the motorcycle. So they have very high quality finishes. Uh, everything's very solid. They ride very luxurious. I'll just get right to the point. They're not that fast. They're very heavy. They actually weigh real close to what a Vespa GTS 300 weighs, but they're just powered by a 150cc or a 125 engine. Pretty similar engine to what was found in, at the time, the Fly 150. They're very close to the Primavera. Actually, the Primavera 150 made more horsepower than the trim, the motor that's found in the 946. So some of the innovations that they had with the 946 is the first Vespa with an all LED headlight. Um, that was pretty novel for two wheelers at the time. In general, they have like this heat sink under here that cools the LED module. Since LED modules are, or headlights are so much more efficient, they don't need to have a heat sink, but that's something that followed with the, the 946 where they had that in there. It's got a pretty simple, just basic, elegant LCD dash. It just gives you the basics like the speed, the time, and your fuel level. It's the first Vespa with a Sidewinder cut key. 
So that's a high security key. It's also got a mobilizer chip in there, like pretty much all modern Vespa starting in 1996 with the ET4. That was the first uh, Vespa with an immobilizer in there. So just like pretty much all modern cars, except for some of those cheap Kias and Hondas, not taking any stabs out, but you can read on that story. Uh, they have a chip in here, so it's really difficult to uh, you know, punch ignition and steal pretty much most any Vespa, with the exception of the 50 cc's and some models like an S150. Uh, some of the cheaper Piaggio products, they don't have an immobilizer in there. Um, it's got the first of this new style trim on the edge, which later with the Primavera in 2015, it was kind of like an introduction of how Vespa's, the modern Vespa is going to be built, the next generation. Because the early GTS, the LX, um, the ET4, they're all very similar how the construction is. And with the 946, they did this, this either chrome-plated plastic trim or a painted plastic trim. And that's something that's carried over to all the Primaveras and the Sprints. And starting in 2023, they also carried this style over to the Vespa GTS 300. And it gives for a much better fit and finish between the outside steel body, the monocoque chassis of the whole scooter, and inner bodywork, which is typically what well, is plastic in all cases, which is the floorboard, and in some cases a glove box, or on the 946, it's just an inner leg shield, similar to the S150, where they didn't have a glove box. So it may not have had a very powerful motor, but it was also the first Vespa with some high technology systems on it. it has traction control, which they call the ASR traction control system. The scooter is really heavy and it's pretty low power, so you probably would never have it activate unless you're maybe on a cobblestone road or a very slick situation, but this is the first model with that traction control system. It isn't the first Vespa with ABS brakes. They did that on the Coza and also on the very, very first years of the GTS 250, but it was the first Vespa with kind of a more highly integrated ABS brake system that communicates to the computer via CAN bus. I just like the nerdy details. Most people don't care about the CAN bus on their scooter, but this scooter does have that in there um, for communications between some of the systems. Um, so some of the technology stuff, it's kind of introducing that to the Vespa line because you come out with the Sprint, has ABS on the front, uh, 2015, the Vespa GTS had ABS front and rear. Actually, in Europe, it was 2014, so shortly after the 946 came out, the GTS had a uh, two-wheel ABS system on it. Uh, ABS is great. It's gonna, you don't care about it. It's not there until you need it. Do a panic stop. Uh, in a turn, it might save you. Um, of course, the opposite of that, as for one more complicated system, but generally they're very reliable on the Vespas. There's something special that the North American market got. Do you have any idea? These little pods. They went to all the added expense to make sure the stem and the pod is actually chrome. In the rest of the world, they had these integrated, nice looking LED running lights and turn signals uh, built into the body without these extra appendages added to both the front and the rear of the scooter. And if you're wondering why they have to add those to the North American market, it's because the spacing, the width of the scooter, or the, the turn signals specifically, um, don't meet the standards for North America. So the actual centers of these, if they were turn signals, isn't quite wide enough for North America. So they have to have them mounted on these pods where they have the extra space. And the same goes with the rear because the European model 946 has very elegant rear turn signals. You barely see them because they're just at the very lower section of that pod. There's one more thing. We get the added extra of the reflectors added to both the fender and the side covers. Unfortunately, they drill holes right into those beautiful aluminum parts. We do have reflector plugs that will fill the holes. 
but if you're trying to make this scooter look true to the European design, you technically have to fill those holes. You know, have somebody uh, aluminum weld those back up and completely repaint that cover. But I don't know, sometimes there's the little charm in having the American model. That's different than the rest of the world as well. So a lot of my customers, they just leave them alone, leave the pods on there, don't really want to mess with it, just the way it was sold to begin with. But of course it's possible here at Scooter West, we do have all four corners of the LED turn signals. I think I've covered it in a past video on how to um, convert this back to the European look with the exception of those uh, reflectors. Takes a bit of uh, body work to do those professionally and remove them. Uh, one other thing about the 946, they always have had leather grips on them and the seat, the saddle itself is made out of leather. There's no under seat storage on the 946. So let me go into the years of the 946s. So pretty much mechanically they've never been changed. So it's always had front and rear disc brakes, the ABS system, the pre-anemic 125 or 150 cc air-cooled motor, pretty much just a luxury boulevard cruiser. But they've had a lot of cosmetic changes over the 11 years of the 946. So actually I'm gonna mix it up a little bit. I'm gonna go backwards. So we're in 2024, I think the most popular market for the 946, it's just my assumption, is the Asian market. So they're catering to the Asian market. So the 2024 is Year of the Dragon on the Chinese Zodiac calendar. So Year of the Dragon is the 2024 model. And you can buy it in North America, $12,500. And I'm gonna go down on the price. There's one little bump in there and we'll talk about the prices as I go. Um, in 2023, which I have right in front of me, is the Year of the Rabbit. They made a thousand of these, $12,500. Of course, there's some dealers here in North America that do have it. And since it's 2024, what's that mean when you have a last year model? You could probably get a good discount on it. So this is available at the Vespa Motorsport showroom. Um, it's in this pretty special kind of pea green color. You either love or hate it. It's very unique as color has never been used on a Vespa. Um, they go as far as painting the mirrors, the wheels. Actually, the wheel design has changed over the years of the 946. Um, they do have a two-piece wheel on pretty much all the models of the 946, and they color key the center of the wheel in many cases to the body color of the scooter. Uh, they have these extra decals for the Rabbit. Same with the Dragon. Um, and they have this commemorative badge that's in the leg shield. This one's uh, 458 of 1,000. So it's right there in the middle. Um, they have this nice gunmetal or titanium gray. And you have the seat that started out in 2014 with the Bellissimo. And pretty much only the first years where they had the very large casting. FYI, this is all made of solid aluminum. Um, the cool thing about the Bellissima style seat is this little passenger or the pillion um, seat is removable. There's some bolts and we'll just take right off. So you can go for the, the really simple looking saddle. Pretty simple to do. I do like the seat on this year of the rabbit. It's kind of got this Alcantara on the side and it's got a nice finish on the top and pretty decent looking stitching. Um, it does open up and reveals a small amount of storage and the gas cap that's much nicer than any of the just standard PVN Vespas. It's got a metal gas cap on here as well. So there's a little storage with a tool kit. I don't know how many people are going to be wrenching on their Vespa 946, but there's some basic tools. They do have a hydraulic dampener on the seat. Um, the Primaveras and Sprints have a spring. The GTS is just on a hinge, nothing that special. And moving the years before the Year of the Rabbit and the, the Dragon. So they had a 
ultra exclusive, I don't know what the number is, it's in the very low hundreds, called the Christian Dior. Can you guess what the price is? About double what this is, about $22,000, and nearly all of them sold for over that amount. We had, I think, three of them here at our dealership. They all sold to collectors, and generally they sold for about $5,000 uh, dealer markup at that time in 2022 when everything was really hot for vehicles, um, especially a designer collector's edition. I had no idea. I don't know anything about high fashion. Look at me, I'm wearing a ball cap, um, a t-shirt. I don't know. So it's just completely out of my realm. It kind of took us by surprise at Vespa Motorsport. Um, they had some ultra exclusive accessories for the Christian Dior edition 946. Um, you can get the Christian Dior box in that Christian Dior uh, fabric, if I recall. It's about $5,000. And they also had a helmet for $2,500. And as a dealership, we couldn't get access to that. You had to buy the scooter, you had to prove the VIN number, and then you can special order those accessories. Um, if you're wondering about what Christian Dior's have sold for after, since they were such a limited run, uh, won an auction for over $40,000. Uh, there's people asking as much as $80,000 for the Christian Dior on the used market, or they're probably like new. Um, even the helmet, I just did a little Google search. Somebody's asking $7,500 for the helmet. So it truly is one of the most collectible modern Vespas. They definitely had a name for it, for the Christian Dior. I would have never imagined that when we were f selling those in 2022. So prior to 2022, they kind of took a break in 2021, if I recall. All the way from 2020 to 2017, they had the product red. So everything was red. It also carried on to the Primavera that they did a product red edition, but they had a product red 946. So it was priced about $2,000 less than what the current 946 is at $10,500. I think it's 10,499 here in the United States. Um, so not much more than the first year Vespa. You know, adjusted with inflation, actually was cheaper than the first year Vespa. So the product red was started by uh, Bono of U2, of the foundation. I think the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation does a lot of the, um, the philanthropy work for the Product Red Foundation. Um, I think Vespa had some certain amount that they donated for each Product Red Vespa 946 sold. I don't know if it was $100 or $500. I don't remember the, the quite details, but they did donate. But it was definitely the longest production run of the 946. So my favorite 946 was in 2015 and 2016. It was the Empori Armani Vespa. It's very elegant looking. They had an optional brown, very dark brown bag for it. It was in a very unique color. Of course, a photo I'm gonna pop up is not gonna do justice for the color. It's probably the best matte finish black Vespa they ever had. So the paint was a several stage paint job. is a matte clear coat on it on black, but it had both a purple and a blue, like pearl iridescence to it. So if you look at it in different angles, you could see a little bit of purple or blue, depending on the angle, or it was kind of more of a green color, if I recall. Um, it was all finished in that matte black, and it had some unique badges uh, for the Emporium Armani. Uh, that was a pretty limited run. The 946 wasn't selling as well. If I had one collector modern Vespa, I'd probably wish I bought the Empori Armani Vespa 946. And that model was $10,500 in 2015, 2016. And one thing to keep in mind is only the first year had the single saddle, like I said earlier. Starting in 2014 was the Bellissima, and that was available both in silver and a metallic blue. They were both very nice colors. They look good, but the, the big, Showcase on the Bellissima is it was the first to have the twin saddle seat where you can actually, if I recall, the pillion seat wasn't attached 
from the factory. You, it came in a separate commemorative box that you can bolt on to the base of the rider's saddle. And it kind of gives for a nice elegant look. It kind of cleans up the look of it versus the original 946 that has a rather large seat. Um, it is pretty cool how that kind of comes out, but I'm sure the first year seat's a lot more comfortable if you're gonna ride a passenger on this. Um, they nearly always have had um, racks available and a small fly screen, and typically in matching finishes. So if you bought the fly screen specific for the rabbit, it would have the green accents for the rods that mount off the windscreen. And as you can see, these racks kind of match the color schemes of the associated year 946. I did notice they did enlarge the, the rack design. The original rack was a little bit smaller. Um, they had the leather bags that snapped to it. One other very unique and rare accessory, they did have an audio system for the first year 946. I uh, never had the opportunity to order one or try one out, but it all went behind the plastics, and I think it mounted on the insides of the plastic and it conducted audio through the plastics without having like a speaker grill. And I think it was like a Bluetooth um, accessory that you could pair to your um, whatever, what would it be, an iPhone 7 at the time, something like that when the 2013 uh, 946 was out. So the original 946, $9,460 here in North America. Uh, we did pretty good with these. A lot of excitement over that first year 946. They do occasionally pop up for sale, such as this example right here in all black. This only has 50 miles. Um, most of my customers that have 946s do not put that many miles. There's a couple exceptions. I know of uh, one here in town that has about 10,000 miles and um, Alex, the owner of Vespa Motorsport, has an Armani, it's about 6,000 miles that he rides weekly, I would say. So there you have it, 10 years of the Vespa 946. Thanks for watching, this is Robot here from Vespa Motorsport and ScooterWest.com. If you're interested in purchasing either of these beautiful Vespas, we ha do have them available in our showroom as of late June 2024. Um, you can find us on the web, VespaMotorsport.com. If you already have a Vespa, you know where to go, ScooterWest.com. We have parts and accessories for every year Vespa, all the way back to the 40s to the latest 2024 model. I'll see you on the next one. Robot here from Vespa Motorsport.